Time for a tall tale short. No one knew who built the tall house on the corner, but it wasn't ordinary. It stood like a grand old storyteller holding secrets in its walls, and the flowers in its garden bloomed brighter and longer than any others in town, as if touched by an enchanting hand. And the windows, oh, those windows, they twinkled in a way that made you pause and wonder. It was like the house was winking at you, sharing a secret that made the world a little more magical. For some kids, the ones with fiery imaginations and kind hearts, this house was more than a building. It was a friend, a gentle guide through life's twists and turns. In its warm embrace, worries could soften and dreams could take root and grow. In this house, with its ivy, its radiant garden and its twinkling windows, something comforting and empowering was always ready to unfold. Part 1. Elsie Elsie's small fingers carefully wiped the tears from her doll's porcelain face, mirroring her own streaked cheeks. In her house, voices had been rising like stormy waves, her parents' worries crashing through the walls. The radio, perched on the mantel, crooned a melancholy tune that resonated with the Great Depression's gloom outside their door. With each letter from the bank that arrived, stamped and stern, their faces tightened, the laughter in the home turning to a scarce echo. I need to escape, she whispered, her voice carrying the weight of an old soul. Elsie climbed the creaking steps to the attic, a place she could always hide. It was filled with remnants of a different time. Her grandmother's lace, her father's childhood marbles, and old, worn photographs that whispered of brighter days. On this particular day, as raindrops pitter-pattered on the roof, her eyes were drawn to a soft, golden glow she had never noticed before. It was a crawl space, and its light was like a warm invitation. Hello, what's this? she whispered her excitement mingling with a touch of apprehension. The air around it seemed to hum with gentle, mysterious energy. With a deep breath, Elsie crawled in. As she moved closer, the light seemed to embrace her. It felt like stepping through a veil of mist. The musty scent of the attic gave way to an aroma of fresh blossoms and wet, sun-kissed grass. The wooden floor beneath her transformed into a soft carpet of velvety moss. Inside, she found herself in a breathtaking garden, unlike any she had seen in storybooks. The colors were more vibrant, the air thicker with sweet perfume. Flowers as tall as Elsie herself hummed sweet melodies, and willow trees danced gracefully to an unseen rhythm. Elsie's tense shoulders relaxed, her teary eyes widening in awe, but a pinch of sadness clung to her. In this place, her family's struggles felt worlds away, Yet they tugged at her heart, making it hard to fully embrace the garden's charm. Your heart is bright, dear Elsie, cooed a gentle daisy, its petals brushing against her hand like a comforting touch. Let this garden comfort you. Elsie's eyes brimmed again, but this time not from pain. Can this place help my family? she asked, her voice a blend of hope and desperation. The daisy swayed softly as though contemplating. In a way, little one, it replied. Throughout her visits to this magic place, Elsie did learn. She breathed deeply with the rhythm of the garden, and as she nurtured the flowers, her own worries began to untangle. She practiced holding the garden's peace inside her like a precious gem. One evening, after another tense dinner, Elsie sat beside her mother and softly placed her small hand over her mom's. It will be okay, Mama, she said, her voice steady and warm. We have each other, and that's our strength. Her mother's eyes welled with tears, not of despair, but of love and pride. In that moment, Elsie realized she had indeed brought a piece of the garden's magic back with her. Peace and confidence within her own heart, strong enough to share. The next day, when Elsie returned to the attic, she found that the golden glow of the crawl space had gently faded. Slipping into the crawl space, her hands met not velvety moss, but plain rough wood. The vibrant hues were gone. No golden glow or sweet-scented blossoms awaited her. 
Instead, she was simply in a plain, dusty attic crawl space. Oh no, she whispered as her heart sank, tears welling in her eyes. But as she sat there amidst the plain wooden beams and cobwebbed corners, she breathed deeply. Slowly, her tears subsided and something bloomed within her. I don't need the garden to be strong, she thought. Elsie crawled back out of the space and dusted off her dress. With a soft, heartfelt smile, Elsie whispered, thank you, and descended the stairs back to her family. Part two, Noah. Noah sat at his desk, gripping his pencil until his knuckles turned white. Words swam on the page in front of him, letters jumbled like a twisted rope. Reading aloud in class was a dreaded task, his heart drumming louder with each tick of the clock. The quick, 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 brown, he stammered, feeling the weight of his classmates' eyes. He was a soft-spoken boy who stitched dreams into the fabric of his imagination. But speaking those dreams aloud was like trying to climb a mountain made of slippery glass. His teacher, Mrs. Harris, offered a patient smile, her eyes warm but tinged with concern. Take your time, Noah she encouraged. After school, in search of solace, Noah ventured into the attic, a quiet place where no one expected him to talk or demanded he untangle his knotted words. As amber light washed over dusty trunks and forgotten memories, his eyes caught a glimmer of something peculiar, a soft, inviting glow emanating from a small crawl space nestled between old furniture and boxes. Stunning, he stammered, eyes widening. The glow beckoned him closer like a comforting hand. Curiosity propelling him forward, Noah ducked his head and crawled in. What he found took his breath away, a cozy library with walls of books that stretched into the sky. It was a sanctuary of silence and stories. From a celestial atlas perched high, a wise old owl fluttered down, its eyes soft and understanding. Fear not your words, it cooed. With each visit to this enchanting library, Noah felt his confidence bud and blossom, the owl acting like the gentlest of teachers, read with him patiently. Under its tutelage, sentences unfurled smoothly from Noah's lips, his stutter giving way to steady, flowing words. One radiant morning, with the magic of the library fresh in his mind, Noah's hand shot up in English class. Mrs. Harris, her surprise quickly shifting into a bright, encouraging smile, nodded warmly. Yes, Noah? she asked. I, he began, but felt his voice wobble. I, I'd like to. His heart began to race, but then he paused and took a deep, grounding breath. In his mind, he saw the comforting library in the attic and felt the encouraging presence of the wise owl. Drawing strength from this memory, he steadied himself and continued. I'd like to share my story with the class, his voice now clear and confident. As his words filled the room, even with the occasional misstep, he painted vivid images that held his classmates in rapt attention. Noah realized he had found his voice, strong and resonant. Days later, when Noah returned to the attic, the crawl space was just that, a simple, unremarkable corner. The vibrant library and the wise owl were gone, but in their place, Noah found something equally precious. His heart, no longer racing with fear, was full of gratitude and stories waiting to be told. With a warm, heartfelt smile, he whispered, Thank you, and descended the stairs, ready to share his voice with the world. Part 3. Amani Amani, her lunchbox clutched tightly in her hands, quickened her pace. The bullies were relentless today sneering and shouting as they chased her down the street. What's that stinky stuff? Alien food, they jeered, mocking the fragrant curry puffs her grandmother used to make in their home in Malaysia. Desperate for refuge, Hermani's eyes darted around and landed on a neglected old house, its windows like sad eyes, its paint peeling like aged parchment. It stood alone and forlorn, yet it seemed to beckon her for comfort. Without a second thought, she darted through its creaking gate the bully's taunts fading as she put distance between them. She found herself in the attic of the house, a space dense with the quiet echoes of time. Her small hand was drawn to a cool doorknob that led to a crawl space, pulsing softly 
with an inviting light. Stepping inside, she was greeted not by an attic filled with dust and cobwebs, but by a grand, vivid carnival. It was a radiant echo of her homeland, the bustling night markets of Penang, where lanterns swayed like stars brought down to earth. The air was rich with the scent of satay and pandan leaves, and the vibrant sound of compang drums filled the air. It's so lively, Amani grinned, her heart lightening, feeling a swell of home in this far-off place, a playful jester adorned with a batik pattern costume that mirrored the traditional attire of Malaysian dancers, handed her a crystal orb. This carnival, it explained warmly, is much like life, Amani. It holds the vibrant colours of your Malaysian roots, and it will dance with new rhythms here in your new home. It's scary and wonderful, all at once. As she held the orb, the jester guided her through the carnival, introducing her to new sights and sounds that blended the familiar with the unfamiliar, a fusion of her cherished past and her promising future. The days following her magical encounter saw a transformation in Amani. Inspired, she decided to bridge the gap between her past and present. One sunny morning, she approached the bullies, her hands carefully holding a tray of curry puffs, their fragrance sweet and inviting. I wanted you to try these, she said, her voice steady but soft. They're from my home, Malaysia. They're really delicious. The bullies eyed the puffs with a mix of curiosity and suspicion. Then one girl bravely took a bite. Her eyes widened and a grin unfolded across her face. This is really good, she exclaimed, but another bully scrunched up his face uncertain. It's different, but try another bite, Amani encouraged gently, her eyes soft but confident. Slowly he did, and his tense expression eased into a surprised smile. With a smile and a laugh, Amani joked, well, let me know if you want me to bring any more alien food for you to snack on. The next week, Amani found herself drawn back to where the old house stood. But when she arrived, she was stunned at what she saw. The time-worn structure had been demolished, leaving a poignant absence on the street where it had once stood, like a missing tooth in a familiar smile. As Amani sifted through the rubble, looking for any signs of the magic she had so recently experienced, kneeling there amid the fragments of the past, Amani could almost hear the echoes of the carnival, the vibrant blend of her past and present homes. Her fingers brushed against something soft, a well-loved porcelain doll. Its paint faded, but its smile still clear. Next to it, she discovered an aged celestial atlas, its pages brittle, but its stars still bright. She didn't know why, but she felt drawn to the relics. Holding the treasures close to her chest, Amani's eyes scanned the rubble. Thank you, she whispered to the space that had once been. With that, Amani rose and turned towards her new life, a life that was now richer, more colourful, and woven with threads of her old and new worlds harmoniously intertwined. This was a tall tale short, small but mighty stories, released daily in audio format. Create, read, and share more tales at talltale.com. 